to look at that, uh, we see there's a gene which is MYOD. MYOD allows us to, be, to build lean muscle mass. That gets damaged by uh, tumor necrosis factor, nuclear factor kappa beta, and uh, uh, when that happens, that person's going to die unless you can reverse that. It's not a question of calories. You can give them uh, more calories, more input, but they cascade downward. Now, the soy compounds shut off nuclear factor kappa beta 100%. That is also the mutation pathway that, that cancer cells use as a, as a path. Uh, also, the interferon uh, Y is reduced with the soy compounds, and it also affects the uh, uh, tumor necrosis factor downward. So we see that we can stop the uh, uh, cascading downward of the uh, cachexia that kills 80% of advanced cancer patients. Now, an example of this, uh, uh, years ago, I had a hospital who had six uh, cancer patients, all had one week or less to, to uh, live, none responsive to any form of conventional therapy, uh, and uh, the hospital administrator gave them uh, you know, a fermented soy beverage. Four out of six were up out of the bed on the feet in three days. One more within five, one died. Took two more just like it. Two out of two were up out of the bed on the feet in three days. And they were still alive five years later. He turned seven out of eight in an impossible category. And so we don't recognize that we are spending too much effort on shrinking the tumor rather than uh, strengthening the patient. Now, chemotherapy uh, uh, is often misunderstood as far as how effective it is. In this area, uh, we have a report on the understanding uh, the effectiveness of chemotherapy drugs. Now, Sidney Farber, uh, Dana Farber Hospital is named after him. That's a large cancer center in, in the United States. He uh, studied eight chemotherapy drugs. One was 100% effective, one was 75% effective, one was 50% effective, the other one was 54.7% uh, effective. When he looked at those people in the study four years later, how many were alive in the uh, one that was 100% effective? Nobody. How many was alive in the one that was 75% effective? Zero. How many were alive in the chemotherapy that was 50% effective? Zero. In the chemotherapy that was 54.7% effective, there were 238 people in that study, 21 years on brain tumors. Of those, 200 were dead out of the 238. Of the 38, 5% had positive benefits. And how did they get 54.7% effective? That included 98 p dead people. When the people died, they cut them open, and if it shrank the tumor, the chemotherapy is termed effective. Now, if the patient dies within 21 days of being treated with the chemotherapy, that uh, is classified as ineff ineffective. Uh, or invaluable. See, they, they throw them out of the study. So we can see that the numbers, when we're looking at it, uh, lead us to the conclusion survivability is what the ball game is about. And so if we uh, look at uh, the cachexia, the chemotherapy treatments often affect this, cascading downward. The patient has uh, diarrhea, vomiting, nausea, anorexia, malnutrition. Uh, and so we can see that uh, first, uh, of the treatments that are out there, most are not going to cure everybody. And so we need to make sure that those who are surviving the treatment are doing quite well. Now, why fermented soy beverages? Well, first, unfermented soy products have difficulties. They have chemotrypsin blocking mechanisms in there. They have growth stunning factors. But the fermented soy beverage uh, shuts off the uh, mutation pathway of cancer cells 100%. And the U.S. government spent $20 million looking at anti-cancer compounds in fruits and vegetables. They found five superstar categories, all are in soybeans. Those are iso isoflavins, there's 12 of those, protease inhibitors, saponins, phytosterols, and phytic acid compounds. 
They then uh, came back, spent 2.9 million studying those. The work on the isoflavins was done by Dr. Stephen Barnes at the Comprehensive Cancer Center at the University of Alabama. Uh, the uh, uh, protease inhibitor work was done by Dr. Ann Kennedy at the University of Pennsylvania. They killed 98 percent of all cancers with their one compound. The saponazin phytosterol work was done by, by uh, Dr. Verrick, and the uh, phytic acid compounds was done by Dr. Ernst Graf. Now, the uh, phytic acid compound IP6 is a very common one. That is out of uh, soybeans. Uh, it's quite uh, strong in soybeans, but let's take that one compound. That compound by itself uh, doesn't directly kill cancer cells, but what it does, it slows down the doubling rate of cancer cells, so it affects what we call a mitosis. In a study with uh, breast cancer, they injected breast cancer cells in, into rats. In the control group, they started developing tumors in 10 days. In the treated group, it took 25 days to start developing tumors. So it delayed the onset of the cancer uh, two and a half times. But at that point in time, 60% of the uh, treated group were cancer-free. And the 40% who had tumors, it was 1 25th the size of the control group. When that was extended to five weeks, 80% were cancer-free in the treated group, and the size of the tumors was 1 49th the size of, of the control group. So we can see that if we can slow down the growth of the cancer, then we have a much greater window of opportunity to treat the patient. For instance, if we looked at uh, small cell lung cancer, which doubles every six days, compared to non-small cell lung cancer, which takes 384 days to double, we can see that those with uh, small cell lung cancer generally die two to four months without treatment, uh, 12 to 14 months with the best, whereas the other one, five years later, would still be alive, running around without difficulty. Now the question is, why do tumors grow in healthy people? Most people think if the immune system is up, uh, you don't have cancer. Wrong answer. What happens is, we know that when we get damaged in the lysome area of a cell, it produces a stress protein known as an exosome. Exosomes from tumors go into the bloodstream and they shut off the, the attack of NK killer cells and T cells. Now, uh, we know from a study uh, that was done at the Comprehensive Cancer Center at the University of Alabama, uh, in this particular chart that's on the wall, what we would see, these, this is a breast tumor placed in a blood bath. And they concentrated the NK killer cells and T cells, uh, put them in the blood bath, concentrated the exosomes put from the uh, tumor, put that in the blood bath, and they measured the immune attack. Now, when NK killer cells and T cells attack, they produce interferon Y. And so we see in the top chart, the uh, uh, maroon colored uh, treatment, we see that's the level of exosomes in the blood bath. At the bottom, uh, right under that uh, left column, that is the amount of interferon that's in that solution, and is none, which means there is no immune attack when we had high levels of the exosomes in the blood. As we reduce the exosome level in the blood, we see that the production interference came up, and so we see that when we uh, decrease the exosome level, we get tremendous immune response if we can get that down. Now, the soy compounds repaired the DNA damage, stopped the production of exosomes in the blood uh, in, in, the, in the tumor cells, and it cleaned it out of the bloodstream. And so we know that uh, that allows us to bring the immune system into action, whereas otherwise the immune system may not be functioning. Now, hormonal changes in women. Uh, uh, Estrogens are c classified as carcinogens. And so we know when, when young girls are there, they, they wind up uh, increasing in estrogen levels, and that phases out in old age. There should be a chart that was there, but anyway, that didn't necessarily work. But we see we are high risk when we have high levels of estrogens. Now, uh, on this, we're missing a curve that we show the estrogen level, but uh, there's a compound which is called 3 beta adiol. 3 beta adiol is a natural compound that protects women from DNA damage by estrogens. It redu reduces in the uh, older age, and this is why we see women with ovarian cancers in older age. Otherwise, uh, we would see higher ovarian cancer rates when they had high levels of estrogens. But they don't have that because the 3 beta adiol is offering the protection. Now, we know that the soy uh, uh, phytoestrogens provide the same protection as the 3 beta adiol. And so as we, as we look at that curve, now we 